black country around Wolverhampton. It hung on in Liverpool and it hung on in South Wales, but most of the rest of the country has lost its minds. And now, thanks to the uh, thanks to the micro brewing revolution in this country, so many of the small craft brewers are now making mild beers again. They don't have to be low in alcohol; they are lower in bitterness than the traditional bitter. But um, this one that we're having is a dark mild. There are also light milds, but Mullins in Lincolnshire have a lean cake, which is a lovely version. Thank like you. Pale mild as opposed to dark mild. But this is the gentleman. It is uh, Rudgate Amber, sorry, Rudgate Ruby Mild from Dogwith, which is on top of just outside York, an old airfield. It's 4.4% alcohol, so it's a good 10% stronger than the average mild in this country. And it's brewed with pale malt, crystal malt, chocolate malt. And the hops are Challenger, here we go again, Cascade, <laughs> and Styrian Goldings. Styrian Goldings come from Slovenia, which is a tiny country but with a great hop growing industry. Styrian Goldings um, are an offshoot of the English Fuggle family enough, but um, they couldn't get their tongue around Fuggle, so they called it a Golding instead. So here we have a beer made with English, American, and European hops, pale, crystal, and chocolate hops. So, all hail to the champion beer of Britain 2009, Rudgate Ruby Mahogany. Um, I think there are a number of um, different characteristics about this beer that uh, are, are striking. I think the colour, if you can all hold it up to the, the window, it's just an absolutely beautiful ruby colour. Yeah, and when it it's just what it says in the name, it's, uh, it's certainly very ruby. Um, for me, again, it's mild. I would never have thought a beer like this could be called mild. Um, but what it was interesting, once I tasted it, um, is actually how light in the mouth it is. It's got some beautiful character on the nose, some sweet. Um, I'm, I'm certainly getting some of that chocolate malt coming through. Um, and some fruity characteristics as well. In the mouth, I actually haven't had a sip of this one yet, because I've been too busy looking at it, it's so, so nice to look at. But from what I remember yesterday, it's very light in the mouth, and I think it's a great beer for people who are the lager drinkers that, uh, that Roger talked about earlier. It's a great introduction into real ale, um, in terms of just offering some character, but not being too over-challenging. Um, yeah, it's, I just think it's a, it's a fabulous, Many years ago, I went to Banksy Brewery in Wolverhampton and took me to a working men's club. And their biggest brand is still Banksy's Original, which they still call it Banksy's Mild, but they've changed the name to Original. But it's a mild ale. It's pale water <coughs> with, uh, with uh, caramel added. And it was one of the biggest men I've ever seen in my life sitting in the room of the club. And they said, that's old Fred. He comes in every lunchtime and has 12 pints. <laughs> I said, what does he mean then? All over. He said, he comes back in the evening for 12, 12 more pints. <laughs> Whether old Fred is still with us, I don't know. But, uh, that was typical of the prodigious amounts of wild beer which people used to drink back in the 50s, 60s and 70s. Not that I was drinking beer that far back, but... Um, um, sadly, that tradition clearly has gone. People don't drink that volume of beer anymore, which is perhaps a good thing for them. But um, it was a beer consumed in vast quantities by people engaged in very hard industrial work. Now, this is absolutely amazing. I mean, we had this yesterday. This was the first beer we had in the <coughs> judging yesterday. When we'd finished all the other beers, we went back to this one just to make certain that we couldn't got it wrong. And um, this one won by a mile. I think it had the biggest number of points between itself and number two of any beer ever judged in the Champion Beer of Britain. It was a very, very easy win. And that aroma is amazing. Don't dismiss mile as a silly, nandy pandy beer. That is, that is almost finest, isn't it? There's, there's some chocolate, there's some coffee, there's some licorice, there's all manner of things going on in there thanks to the dark walls. And then it becomes 
put joy in the mouth, so it's not floury, it's not too sweet. Hops are kicking in, there is some, some hop character there. And again, the finish is bittersweet and finely dry, so that you would go on like old Fred. And a few more bites of this one. And here's a challenge for Kiri, what would you eat for this? I 